statement which will be made available to you, but which I will read for the audio media. This morning at 7 a.m., the union representing those who man America's air traffic control facilities called a strike. This was the culmination of seven months of negotiations between the Federal Aviation Administration and the union. At one point in these negotiations, agreement was reached and signed by both sides, granting a $40 million increase in salaries and benefits. This is twice what other government employees can expect. It was granted in recognition of the difficulties inherent in the work these people perform. Now, however, the union demands are 17 times what had been agreed to, $681 million. This would impose a tax burden on their fellow citizens, which is unacceptable. I would like to thank the supervisors and controllers who are on the job today, helping to get the nation's air system operating safely. In the New York area, for example, four supervisors were scheduled to report for work and 17 additionally volunteered. At National Airport, a traffic controller told a news person he had resigned from the union and reported to work because, quote, how can I ask my kids to obey the law if I don't, end quote. This is a great tribute to America. Let me make one thing plain. I respect the right of workers in the private sector to strike. Indeed, as president of my own union, I led the first strike ever called by that union. I guess I'm maybe the first one to ever hold this office who is a lifetime member of an AF of LCIO union. But we cannot compare labor management relations in the private sector with government. Government cannot close down the assembly line. It has to provide without interruption the protective services which are government's reason for being. It was in recognition of this that the Congress passed a law forbidding strikes by government employees against the public safety. Let me read the solemn oath taken by each of these employees in the sworn affidavit when they accepted their jobs. I am not participating in any strike against the government of the United States or any agency thereof, and I will not so participate while an employee of the government of the United States or any agency thereof. It is for this reason that I must tell those who fail to report for duty th this morning, they are in violation of the law, and if they do not report for work within 48 hours, they have forfeited their jobs and will be terminated. End of statement. Mr. President, are you going to order any union members to violate the law to go to jail? Well, I have some people around here, and maybe I should speak to refer that question to the Attorney General as to... Do you think they should go to jail, Mr. President, if anybody violates this law? Uh, I've told you what I think should be done. They're terminated. Well, as the President has said, uh, striking under these circumstances constitutes a violation of the law, and we intend to initiate, in appropriate cases, criminal proceedings against those who have... Uh, uh, have violated the law. How quickly will you initiate criminal proceedings? We will initiate those proceedings as uh, as soon as we can. Today? We'll, the, the process will be underway probably by uh, noon today. Are you going to try and find a million dollars a day? Well, that's the prerogative of the court. Uh, in, in the event that uh, uh, any individuals are found guilty of contempt of a court order, the penalty for that, of course, is imposed by the court. What are you going to do about the union strike force? Look at yours. We think we had a very satisfactory offer on the table. It's twice what other government employees uh, are going to get, 11.4%. Their demands were so unreasonable, there was no spot to negotiate when you're talking to somebody 17 times away from where you presently are. We do not plan to increase our, our offer to the union. As far as I'm concerned, under no circumstance. We will not meet with the union as long as they're on strike. When they're uh, off a strike, and assuming they're not decertified, we will meet with the union and try to negotiate a satisfactory uh, contract. Uh, relatively, uh, it's going quite well. We're operating uh, somewhat in excess of 50% uh, capacity. We could increase that. We've determined until we feel we're in total control of the system 
that we will not increase that. Also, as you probably know, we have some rather severe weather in the Midwest, and our first priority is safety. There has been a court action to impound the strike fund of $3.5 million. We are going before the National Labor Relations Authority this morning and ask for decertification of the union. Uh, the last offer we made in present value was exactly the same as the first offer. Mr. Paul, I asked me about 11 o'clock last evening if he could phase the increase in over a period of time. Uh, for that reason, we phased in over a longer period of time. It would have given him a larger uh, increase in terms of where he would be when the next negotiation started, but in present value, it was the $40 million originally on the table. Well, we will seek whatever uh, a penalty is appropriate under the circumstances in each individual case. It is certainly one of the uh, one of the penalties that is provided for in the uh, in the law, and in appropriate cases, we uh, could very well seek that penalty. What's appropriate? Well, that depends upon the fact of each case. What makes the difference? Well, there's no way to answer that question. We would just have to wait until we get into court, see what the circumstances are, and, and determine what position we would take in, in the various cases under the facts as they develop. So you won't go to court and ask the court the specific Well, I'm sure we will when we reach that point, but there's no way to pick a figure now. President, will you delay your trip to California with Chancellor? The strike is still on this week. If any situation should arise that would require my presence here, naturally I, I will do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be a decision that awaits what's going to happen. May I just, because I have to back in there for another appointment, may I just say one thing on top of this, with all this talk of penalties and everything else, uh, I hope that you will emphasize again the possibility of termination. Because I believe that there are a great many of those people, and the fine people, who have been swept up in this and probably had not really considered uh, the result, the fact that they had taken an oath, the fact that this is now in violation of the law, as that one supervisor referred to with regard to his children. And I am hoping that they will, in a sense, remove themselves from the lawbreaker situation by returning to their posts. I have no way to know whether this had been conveyed to them by their union leaders who had been informed that this would be the result of a strike. Your deadline is 7 o'clock Wednesday morning for them to return to work. No, I said, wait, wait a minute, Wednesday morning. Yeah, 48 hours. 11 o'clock. Yes. Why have you taken such strong action as your first action? Why not today, uh, some uh, lesser action at this point? What lesser action can there be? The law is very explicit. They are violating the law. And as I say, we called this to the attention of their leadership, whether this was conveyed to the membership before they voted to strike, I don't know. But uh, this is one of the reasons why there could be no further negotiation while this situation uh, continues. You can't sit and negotiate uh, with a union that's in violation of the law. And their oath. And their oath. Are you more likely to proceed criminal, uh, criminal direction towards the leadership than the ranking five? Well, that, that again is not, not for me to answer. No, no, no. In answer to the previous question, we will uh, move both civil and criminal, probably more civil than criminal, and we are now uh, have papers uh, in the U.S. Attorney's offices under the Attorney General uh, in about 20 locations around the country where we'll be involved in two or three principal people. As far as the military personnel are concerned, they're going to fundamentally be back up to the supervisory personnel. We have about 150 uh, on the job, uh, supposedly about a half hour ago. We're going to increase that to somewhere between 700 and 850. Secretary, I'm going to leave the questions to you. Thank you very much. Secretary, 